Zemo! What's going on guys, it's Zemo. Today I wanted to do a discussion on the leak of all of the cards in the OTS Tournament Pack number 2 that just got leaked out earlier today. It's a really awesome pack. It's actually kind of funny because a lot of the things I predicted in one of my videos, the top 5 cards that I feel should be rarity bumped, are actually showing up in this pack. So I'm really excited to see that. So without further ado, I'm going to go ahead and get right into it. I got the list right here on my phone. What I'm going to do is um, I'm going to start with the commons, mainly because um, there's a lot of them. I'm only going to kind of highlight the ones I feel are important. Um, we're going to be getting a couple more of the OCG import cards from the really early sets. We usually get three every time. It's usually two vanillas and a fusion. So we're going to be getting those. Um, what's also really cool is Cyber Dragon Core is actually getting reprinted, which I only think has had one printing, and that's in the Cyber Dragon structure deck. So that's kind of cool, seeing as how it's a side deck choice for some players going up against Cosmo or any kind of machine-heavy decks. Kind of a good reprint, in my opinion, there. And then we also have, um, you know, a couple... The, the biggest one, I think, in my opinion, is Melody of the Awakening Dragon, because anyone wanting to play you know, uh, Blue Eyes or any Dragon variant type of deck revolving around Blue Eyes, it's going to be huge. And the fact that this is going to be reprinted, at the time of the, making this video, Melody of the Awakening Dragon is a $15 to $20 super rare that's only been printed, you know, once. So, giving this as a reprinted common is really good. It's going to help push the value of that card down for people who don't already have their play set. And it's going to make the deck a lot more accessible to the rest of you guys who do want to play the deck. So, I think that's really important. Um, the last one I kind of wanted to touch on really quick was Wiretap. Wiretap, as you guys know, is one of my favorite traps ever. Just because of the fact that you could shuffle back something like a Solid Warning, and then you could almost make it a dead card, depending on where we're at in the game. So, really good counter trap. It's only been printed once, so I think it was a really good pick, in my opinion. And it's really cool just to see it, you know... It's not really competitively relevant too much anymore. It's still a really good card nonetheless. So it might be worth just picking up a couple copies if you don't already have some. So moving on to the supers. I'm actually going to list all of them out because pretty much all the super rares are really, really good. So we have Gamma Seal, the Sea Turtle Kaiju, Fiendish Rhino Warrior, Mithra, the Thunder Vassal, Phantom Knights of Ragged Gloves, Super Quantum Blue Lair. Uh, we have System Down, Mask of Restrict, and then we have two uh, Ninjutsu art cards, which is really kind of fucking weird. And then we also have uh, the Prime Monarch. So going through this, um, I'll just go top to bottom. Gamma Seal was on my list. Fucking great pick in my opinion. Gamma Seal's amazing. Literally outs everything. Hashtag tribute the fuck over it, as you guys all remember. So I'm really happy to see Gamma Seal getting the treatment it deserves. Phoenix Rhino Warrior is another good one. That card should have been a super in Bosch uh, because Phoenix Rhino Warrior is just incredible. Um, Mithra is another one. Mithra is the best vassal um, that's not counting like the uh, original Squires, Eddie and Idos. So it's really cool that that's going to get super rare printing as well up from the common. Um, then we have Ragged Gloves, which is really good because it's the only one that doesn't already have a hollow printing, i.e. Boots and uh, Cloak. So that's going to be nice to have that rarity bump to kind of match the rest of those as well. Blue Lair is a good pick too, uh, mainly just because uh, Red Lair is an Ultra. Blue Lair is kind of a rare and, you know, e Telly's vary from Gold Rare all the way up to Ultimate. So it's really cool to see that that's getting a super rare printing as well. I think it's well deserved there. Uh, System Down is a really interesting one. System Down's had a lot of printings. But the only foil printing it has is actually Ultimate Rare. So this is actually going to be the second foil printing of System Down. There is a rare, but the Super Rare is probably going to look really nice. And, you know, Cosmo is still a thing, so it's nice to just kind of have that as an option. Um, Masker Restrict, another card in my video. Great pick in my opinion. It's a really expensive card, and just giving it another hollow printing is going to be really well warranted. Um, the Ninjutsu art cards are really fucking random. Like... I really wish these two slots were dedicated to, like, Sky Iris and, like, Kirin, because I feel like those two cards deserve to be hollow of anything. Pendulum kind of, like, just took it in this OTS pack. It didn't really get anything. But yet, here these Ninjutsu art cards are randomly getting hollow printings after, you know, years upon years. So I don't understand that pick at all. Um, I mean, I guess someone on the R&D team really wanted max learning ninjas, I guess, but... 
I mean, Dark Samorg's relevant, and that deck plays it, so who the fuck knows? I have no clue. Um, and last but not least, the Prime Monarch. Oh my god, I'm so happy this card's getting a super printing. It so deserves it. The Prime Monarch is an incredibly powerful card, and I couldn't be happier to see that this is finally going to get the hollow treatment that it deserves. I'm super, super excited. So, last but not least in the OTS pack, we have three ultimate rares, and the ultimate rares are Fall King, Kuraz the Light Monarch, and Raigeki. So, let's go back to Fog King. Fog King's a really fucking weird choice, in my opinion, because it's like this really situational side deck card that, like, it's not even, like, part of a main engine or anything. Like, it's just, it's so weird. Like, this could have been Majesty's Fiend. Like, we got Vanity's Fiend in the first one. This could have been Majesty's Fiend would have just been far better than fucking Fog King. Like, I I don't know what they were thinking on this one, but it's just kind of weird. It's gonna look fucking sick, don't get me wrong, but it's just a really odd choice. Uh, moving on, Kuraz the Light. When I saw Kuraz, like, I probably, like, came a little because although Kuraz is, like, one of those cards that's, you know, it's a part of the Monarch engine. It's really, really good. Um, you kind of hate it as much as you love it for anyone who's a Monarch player, but Kuraz as an ultimate rare is going to look so fucking good i cannot wait and it's really cool because i mean the only ways you can get this card are super duelist league which good fucking luck with that and then like common i'm pretty sure the only other printing so ultimate rare kuraz is gonna be amazing and you know that's just gonna make you know, they're just going all out on maxing out monarchs so i couldn't be more excited for that and then last but not least Raigeki, this card deserves it as well. Um, some people were kind of wondering if Raigeki is going to go back to being forbidden, but now that this is getting a printing in Ultimate Rare, I'm pretty sure Raigeki is here to stay for a long time. So that's really nice. You know, we've gotten like something like MST. Um, we've got these Ultimate Rare cards of Staples, and that, those are my favorite ones, is when they hollow out, or rather Ultimate Rare out, cards that everyone's going to use, cards like MST. Like Regeki, you know, Fiendish Chain. These are the cards that deserve the ulti slot the most, in my opinion. So I couldn't be happier to see that Regeki got that slot. And Regeki as an ultimate rare is going to look fucking sick. But anyway, that's actually going to do it for the video. Overall, this is an amazing OTS pack. I'm really, really fucking hyped for this because I am, oh my god. Like, when I get those super primes and those ulti Karaz, it's, oh man, it's going to be a good day. So let me know down in the comments what you guys think about the OTS pack. And let me know what your favorite card is in the set. I'd really like to see that as well. And if there's anything you think should have been here instead of, you know, the fucking ninjutsu card. So thank you all so much for watching the video. See you next time. See you next